Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tinwan Jayasinghe and we are from Department of Transport and Logistics Management, University of Morotua, Sri Lanka. And we are presenting today the paper that we have submitted to EAST under the title of Calibration of Sumo Microscopic Simulator for Sri Lankan Traffic Conditions. Like any other transport model, uh, microscopic traffic simulation models also aim to accurately reproduce the real world traffic conditions. Of course, this is largely dependent on the accuracy of data that we input to the simulation, but also accuracy can be further improved with uh, model calibration. So here uh, we say model calibration as a process of adjusting the estimates of the different model parameters to better represent the actual traffic conditions. So traditionally the model calibration was done using trial and error methods but more recently researchers have uh, extensively researched on this area and uh, have proposed a different optimization algorithm based calibration processes. So in this study our objective is to first to create a microscopic traffic simulation model and we propose some generic methods to do so and here we are using a sumo open source microscopic traffic sim simulator as our simulator and then uh, we also develop a method to uh, automate the calibration process and then both the uh, methods described above will be applied to a small urban corridor in Colombo, Sri Lanka. So let's first see the method that we propose for model creation. For this, we will use uh, some built-in tools available uh, in Sumo installation. So first we have to get the network from OpenStreetMaps and then we use that network to extract a set of white list of routes that are possible within this uh, network. And then we use the traffic counts available with us and then run it through another script and get a root file that matches the vehicle count that we have and then that way that root file has to be edited to match the vehicle classes that we have and also it's like different attributes like dimensions and then we get the final root file after those uh, edits and then we use the network and the root file to run the simulator and then once the simulations are run we can uh, get some simulated outputs for our calibration work so as our algorithm, we use a simultaneous perturbation stochastic approximation algorithm, uh, often known as SPSA. So the advantages of SPSA is that uh, you can use any actual traffic measurements for the evaluation of objective function. And also it is computationally efficient and therefore uh, using this algorithm, uh, it is possible to uh, even calibrate large uh, traffic simulation models. So let's see how SPSA has been used in the calibration process. So first to start, we need to have some initial estimates for the model parameters that we try to calibrate. And using the hyperparameters of SPSA, we calculate gain sequences. And we use this to uh, perturbate the initial estimates and get two set of intermediate estimates, which will be passed into SUMO and evaluate the objective function. So in this study, we've used a mean absolute percentage error uh, as our objective function uh, where we use observed and simulated traffic uh, speeds to calculate the error. So we get two uh, loss function values which will be used for gradient approximation and based on that we calculate new set of estimates which will be passed again into SUMO to evaluate the uh, loss function value at the with the new set of estimates and then uh, if maximum iterations has been reached uh, we stop the process and if not uh, we will continue the uh, process until maximum iterations are reached so let's quickly look through the stochastic aspects that has been considered in this study so first when entering vehicles into the simulation we use the least occupied lane rather than fixing a lane and then also the driver imperfection is accounted and uh, we do a couple of algorithm restarts to continue to reduce the error and also we use uh, random seeds both in the SPSA algorithm and SUMO simulator to uh, maintain the stochastic aspects.
Okay, so let's move on to the case study. A two kilometer road segment in Colombo, Sri Lanka has been chosen as the uh, study area. On the left hand side, uh, the study area is shown in the OSM maps. And on next to that, uh, how it has been shown in Sumo Network Editor is uh, given. And you can see that uh, in Sumo Network, we have one entry where all the vehicles enters from that uh, edge and uh, have two exit points. And we have the count location where the traffic counts were taken. Uh, and then the speed measurements also taken at the same location. And on the right hand side, the, the, the screenshot of the location is shown. So in terms of data collection for traffic counts, we use the video recording on location from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then later this video was used to manually count the vehicles and then aggregated in, into five minute intervals based on different vehicle types. And when you consider different vehicle types, we can see three wheelers, cars and motorcycles are dominating. So the speed data was collected using Google Apps Script based method where the data was collected in five minute intervals and length and width of the vehicles were also uh, measured uh, using uh, proxy vehicles and these collect data was collected by the colleagues who worked uh, in the same project which I use for this study. So five different model parameters has been used for the calibration out of which one is coming from the car following model and the other four is coming from the lane change model. And the initial guesses that has been used uh, to start the SPSA algorithm is highlighted here. And as the car following model, uh, we use the Sumo default car following model Krauss. And here to uh, show the lane change behavior, the sub lane model is also activated. Let's move on to the results section. Uh, first, we will show how the error has been reduced using uh, the SPSA algorithm. So on the graph, on the x-axis, we can see the number of iterations and on the y-axis, we can see the mean absolute percentage error. So at start, the error was quite high and it was uh, sort of reduced gradually. And we had to restart the algorithm a couple of times uh, in order to uh, reduce the error further. So uh, in a given run, uh, the lowest error, uh, the parameter sets that produce the lowest error, uh, considered as the initial guess for the next run. So likewise, we had uh, restarted the algorithm three times, and the best result was taken from the restart of three, which produced the lowest error. Then we tried uh, by using different random seeds, if it, is it possible to reduce the error further? Uh, so for that we used three different set of random seeds in SPSA algorithm and ran the simulation but uh, as you can see the error reduction was minimum. Uh, so at this stage we considered three set of uh, estimates uh, that produces the lowest error from each random seed and considered as the candidate set of estimates uh, for calibration. So we use those candidate estimates that have been identified uh, in the simulator but this time we use different random seeds from the simulator side. So we use 200 different random seeds for each candidate set and uh, ran the simulation and captured the uh, mean absolute percentage error value and uh, as you can see in the plot uh, the candidate set 2 provided the lowest median error uh, therefore, in general, we can uh, identify as this is the best set of estimates that closely represent the traffic behavior. So let's compare the observed traffic measurements versus the simulated traffic measurements. On the left hand side, we compare the simulated speed versus the observed speeds. And on the right hand side, we uh, compare the simulated counts versus the observed count. In both occasions, we can see that the mean absolute percentage error is around 0 0.15 and the points are uh, symmetrically distributed uh, along the 45 degree line. Let's compare the observed and simulated speeds along the time interval where the data was collected. So if you see the speeds, we can see that the simulated speeds are closely following the observed speed and also the simulated traffic counts are also closely following the observed traffic counts. So 
So to summarize the findings of the case study, the model parameters that has been used in the calibration and the default estimate of SUMO and also the calibrated uh, sets of estimates have been tabulated uh, in this table. As you can see, the calibrated estimates are largely different from the default parameter values used in the simulator. So to conclude, we can see that using the automated calibration procedure, we were able to reduce the mean absolute percentage error from 0.87 to 0.15. And we see that most of the calibrated parameter estimates are different from the simulator's default value, suggesting that in the Sri Lankan conditions, the driver imperfectness is higher and drivers are more eager to do lane change to gain speed and also drivers are more willing to encroach laterally on other drivers. So as future work, we see the potential of uh, using these methods uh, to calibrate larger networks with uh, traffic measurements taken from multiple locations. And also we try to calibrate model parameters for different vehicle types specifically. So that uh, marks the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you very much.